the production of this documentation was the end goal of the entire process because they wanted to demonstrate to the rest of the world what life is like in the Lukashenko government. And nothing says dictatorship like arresting people for eating ice cream. We catch up, and I, I talked to a delegation recently of people who were under 25 who were exploding media, and, and I was interested in how were they playing with media, so I prepared some cards, and they said things like radio, television, internet, MySpace, and I gave it to these girls who were about 12, and I said, just put them in the order for me of what's unimportant to what's important. Let's tune in when these kids were talking about television. Well, I think it's important, um, but like not necessary, because you can do a lot of other stuff with your free time than watch programs. Which is more fun, internet or TV? Internet. <laughs> I think we, the reason, one of the reasons we put computer before TV is because Nowadays, like, we have TV shows on the computer. Oh, yeah. And they can download onto your iPod. Would you like to be the president of a TV network? Um, I would. That would be <laughs> so special. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to lose all their money eventually. Like, the stock market up and down and stuff. I think right now the computers will be at the top and everything will be kind of going down and stuff. You know. Uh, you know, we have generally stayed away from the content business, and that's really about an issue of bias. Um, in search, there really is an element of trust and of honesty. When people do a search, they want to know that they got that answer because it was the best possible answer, not because there was a bias or, or Google was going to make more money off of it, which is why we tried very hard to make it very clear where we do make our money in the form of advertising. and. Um, Overall, our, we haven't wanted to host content. We've done it in cases where we needed to in order to provide good user experience, like video. Video players all over the web were broken. We needed to have one unified one that was, was sure to work. Um, and in things like Google Book Search, where we saw publishers not able or equipped to host those pages themselves. Uh, but generally, we've tried to stay away from hosting content because we think it does introduce a factor of bias. It's about, I think, 8% of domestic U.S. internet traffic, so we have a tremendous amount of traffic, and we're also a platform that services other advertisers and other publishers across the internet, much as Google does. Um, we think there's some advantage into having a uh, owned and operated network uh, in terms of what it teaches us about being a publisher, being a principal in the publishing business. Uh, I think increasingly there's less and less um, original content, we're beginning to leverage the phenomenon like peer production, things like Flickr, where we didn't go out and license a bunch of great photos from Corbis or Getty or anything like that. We created a platform and used the hundreds of millions of users that come to Yahoo to fill that up. Our job is to create great tools which, which uh, give them the right uh, framework and platform to do that and share that content with each other. It's not something that's done by somebody else now. News and journalism are things that we do collabor collaboratively and together, and we can do more together than we could ever do apart. And then there's a network architecture to all this that puts us in a whole different relationship. So the advice that I give big media companies now is to stop blaming about Google, and to instead look at it and say that Google is the one company, and I, wouldn't, I would say this even if Marissa were not here, Google is the one company that has figured out the internet. So the, the intelligent approach to this is to ask, what would Google do? It should be a bumper sticker in the, in the U.S., WWGD. We had a very interesting session for our scientific advisory board. Our scientific advisory board is well-known geneticists who are really smart and know a lot, and they were very concerned that we would be too consumer-oriented and you know, not serious enough and give people too much information they couldn't understand. And then when they got their own results back, Suddenly their attitude changed and they said, wow, this is exciting. Tell us more. Also, you know, for areas like heart disease, there is that potential where there's a big lifestyle component and potentially you get this information, you see that you, your genotype is associated with an increased risk. So does that make you want to eat better? Does that make you want to exercise more? And for some areas where there's, there's not specific things that you could do, so something like multiple sclerosis, hopefully, by gathering all this information, in five to ten years, there will actually be more things. These uh, two days. So let me thank you all for coming, for being uh, speakers, contributing this. And before I, I thank to uh, the people who organized it, 
the floor is to you because oh this is a God. kind of <laughs> this is a kind of probe because tomorrow we will be together on the focus night cup. So we just try it. I, I just want to say I'm so grateful to be here and to be invited here by you, Dr. Berto. And I had no idea it's my first time being at the DLD. And just I can feel the energy of people's enthusiasms and just bouncing. And it's like really a pleasure for me to be here. I'm very honored. It's a whole new world for me. So thank you so much. L'amore passa, c'era una volta che non c'è più.